What's up fish friends, it's Alex here, your friendly reef dog. And today I'm gonna to tell you eight things that people who've been in the hobby for a very long time do. If this is your first time here, I put out a video every week with tips on how to set up and maintain an awesome reef tank. So don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss out. Right, let's take a look. The first thing on my list that pro reefers do is embracing free cleanup crew like bristle worms and Asterina starfish. As a beginner, pretty much everything in the hobby is the unknown. So when you come across something freaky looking like a bristle worm, the natural reaction is to panic and assume it's going to eat your fish. But most experienced reefers welcome these critters as free cleanup crew. They don't really cause any harm to your tank and they're great scavengers of food that would otherwise rot in your sand bed. The risk here is that many bad worms and stars look similar to good ones, particularly with Asterina starfish, with some varieties that will eat corals. So it can never hurt to ask for a few opinions on whether you've got a goodie or a baddie. But bristle worms in particular are generally seen by experienced reefers as a welcome addition to your tank. Number seven on my list of things pro reefers do is putting putty or frag plugs around encrusting corals. Encrusting corals like Cyphastria, certain Montiporas or Zoas are a personal favorite of mine. By their very nature though, they can take over a rock in a relatively short space of time. One solution to slow or control growth is to put putty or a frag plug next to the coral. When it grows over the frag plug or putty, you then pull the plug away and replace it so the coral won't spread too far. It's not a perfect solution and it can be difficult to completely surround a coral without ruining the look of your tank, but it massively reduces spread and of course generates frags you can sell to friends or trade at your local fish shop for store credit. Number six is a really simple one, regularly cleaning equipment. Your return pump and power heads don't take long to get covered in algae, which of course reduces performance. And you'll be surprised at just how big a difference a quick clean makes. Experienced reefers will regularly clean their equipment to maximize performance, and it's particularly worthwhile given that flow is probably more important in a reef tank than lighting. If you only clean your return pump, skimmer cup, or power heads once a year, they will probably go a bit crazy when you put the clean unit back in your tank. So a quick bath once a month will keep your kit running at maximum capacity. Number five on my list of things pro reefers do is run SPS tanks with high par levels. Bulk Reef Supply have done some great tests to show that even high light demand corals like Aquapora don't need more than 350 par to get great color and growth. And it's certainly not true to say that all experienced reefers run their lights at high levels, but I've seen some fantastic tanks that run par 50 to 100% higher than the BRS recommendation of 350. It seems to bring out vivid colours that you just don't see in other tanks, and there's simply no doubt that an experienced reefer with the right tank can get banging results with strong lighting. This probably isn't something you should experiment with as a beginner, as it won't work in every tank. If I were to bump my lights up that high, my corals would bleach more or less overnight. Number four is placing corals based on colours rather than species. The natural temptation when you're choosing where to place corals is to lump species together. So zoas with zoas, mushrooms with mushrooms, and so on and so forth. But that won't always result in the best look. Complementary colours though, like red and green and pink and yellow, create a strong contrast that really stands out. And that will be the case regardless of whether or not the two corals are the same species. It's probably not possible to do this with all of your corals, and you'll still need to make sure you're placing your coral in the right light and flow for each particular coral but it's a tip I borrowed after seeing it put to great use in some long established tanks, and it makes the absolute world of difference. If you do a quick Google search for color calculator, the internet will even tell you what colors to choose. Number three on my list of things pro reefers do is dipping corals. And this is something overlooked by a lot of new reefers, particularly with their first few corals. The purpose of dipping corals is to place them in a bath of something that's gentle on corals, but will kill things like nudibranchs or flatworms that can otherwise eat your corals. The gold standard here is to quarantine corals, as dipping won't kill things like nudibranch eggs. But while that's too much hassle for most people, there's absolutely no excuse not to dip. It's very easy to do, it only takes a few minutes, and it can prevent an absolute catastrophe. And this is one tip beginners absolutely should take note of. Beginner favourites like Montiporas and Zoas are among the most at-risk corals when it comes to potentially deadly hitchhikers. And the runner-up is buying corals from fellow hobbyists. I talk a lot on this channel about the benefits of buying properly settled corals instead of freshly imported or freshly cut corals. And the chances are that if you buy a frag from a fellow hobbyist, the mother colony has probably been settled for a very long time indeed. That should mean they're more likely to retain their colours and not just survive, but thrive. 
and fellow hobbyists will probably have a better variety of really nice corals, as well as some of the more rare species that shops don't get hold of. Your local fish shop will usually still be your number one source, but you can get some absolutely fantastic corals from hobbyists. They'll usually be bigger and cheaper than in shops, and if you can collect, you get to see some really inspirational tanks and talk to another hobbyist about fish stuff. And my number one thing that pro reefers do is quarantining fish. Now quarantining fish isn't for everyone, myself included, and I've done a video presenting the argument against quarantine. But there are plenty of experienced reefers who wouldn't dream of buying a fish without quarantining it first. Not only does quarantine give you the opportunity to observe your new fish, to see if it develops signs of illness, it also gives the fish time to settle into its new life in captivity. The longer you've had your tank for, the more nervous you will get when you introduce new fish. If you introduce a diseased fish, there's a very good chance that disease will spread to all of your fish and kill them one by one. Quarantine is one of those things where you only realise how important it is after you've had to deal with the disease that quarantine would have prevented. And if the thought of watching fish you've had for years dying one by one doesn't make you think twice about quarantine, nothing will. So there you have it then, they are eight things that experienced hobbyists do. If you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe for next week. And until next time, happy reefing.